Hi guys, welcome to our video. In this video, we are going to talk about reproductive isolation. Before we begin, try to look closely these two birds. What do you think? Are they similar? They might look similar, but they are actually not. They are two different species. The one on the left is the great black bat girl, while the one on the right is the lesser black bat girl. The sound they make and the other behaviors are different enough. When both of them meet, but they do not interest to interbreed, they are not anymore the same species. So, what is species? Species is a group of population whose the members have the potential to interbreed in nature, produce a viable and fertile offspring, reproductively isolated from other population. If we refer back to our two types of bird just now, we may know that both of them do not interbreed in nature due to barrier. The existence of barriers that stop members of two different species from producing a viable and fertile offspring with each other is called reproductive isolation. You may have known that there are few factors that may lead to speciation, the formation of new species through evolution. The first, reproductive isolation. Second, genetic drift. The third, hybridization and the fourth adaptive radiation however in this video we are focusing only on reproductive isolation reproductive isolation it can be defined as reproductive barrier that prevent members of two species from interbreeding and producing viable and fertile offspring it can be divided into two Prezygotic isolation and postzygotic isolation. Prezygotic isolation, as you can tell, the prezygotic isolation or barrier that occurs before fertilization, which prevent mating between individuals. Prezygotic isolation can be divided into five: habitat isolation, behavioral isolation, temporal isolation. Mechanical isolation and gametic isolation. Habitat isolation isolates two species although they live in the same area but occupy different habitats. They lack opportunity to encounter each other or even if they encounter each other, they do not interbreed. For example, the garter snakes, Temnophis atratus, live mainly in the water while the garter snakes, Temnophis sertalis, live mainly on land. Behavioral isolation. It isolates two species, even closely related species, based on their unique courtship ritual that attract mates. Such behavioral ritual enable melt recognition. A way to identify potential mates of the same species. For example, blue-footed boobies, inhabitants of Galapagos, met only after a courtship display unique to their species. Temporal isolation. Isolates two species based on their different breeding time. Some breeding during the day, some at night, while some others may during winter or summer. So, it is less likely for the interbreeding to occur. For example, the eastern spotted skunk breeds in the late winter, while the western spotted skunk breeds in the autumn. Okay, let's say both different species attempted to mate, but it was unsuccessful. This may due to mechanical isolation that isolate two species due to different morphological differences. For example, if you watch closely, the shell of two species of snail in genus Bradybena spiral in different direction. One spirals in the clockwise direction while the other is counterclockwise direction. As a result, the snail's genital openings are not aligned and mating couldn't be completed. The last one is gametic isolation. The sperm and the egg from two different species are unable to fuse to form zygote. This is because the specific molecule on egg coat cannot adhere to specific molecule on the sperm cell from different species. In this case, the typical example is between the gamete of red sea urchin and the purple 
sea urchin that are unable to fuse. Okay, let's say what will be if fertilization is successful and the zygote form. Now, come another barrier that is what we call as post-zygotic isolation. In this case, note that the offspring produced is known as hybrid. Post-zygotic isolation. It is isolation or a barrier that occurs after fertilization which prevents the hybrid zygote from developing and reproducing. Means, mating is successful, fertilization is successful, and a hybrid zygote form. Postzygotic isolation can be divided into three. Hybrid inviability, hybrid sterility, and hybrid breakdown. First, hybrid inviability. The F1 hybrid zygote fails to develop. It will die at early stage of embryonic development. The genetic information is insufficient to carry the organism throughout normal development. For example, the hybrid zygote of frog genus Rhina do not complete development and frail. Second, hybrid sterility. The F1 hybrids are successfully developed throughout the embryonic development and grow into adult. However, they may be sterile, which is unable to produce viable functional gamete. For example, mule. Mule is the F1 hybrid from male host mating with female donkey. The mule is sterile. Another example is Tigon, which is the F1 hybrid of the male tiger mate with lioness. Hybrid breakdown. Hybrid may be fertile in the first generation, but when they mate, their offspring produce a sterile. The offsprings of hybrids have reduced fertility. For example, different cotton species can produce fertile hybrid, but breakdown occurs in the next generation when the offspring of the hybrid die as seeds or grow into weak and defective plants. So, that's all from us for the reproductive isolation. If you got any question, drop your questions in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Stay correct. So, as summary, we can conclude that reproductive isolation can be divided into two, prezygotic isolation and postzygotic isolation. Prezygotic isolation is barrier that occurs before fertilization which prevent mating between individuals. While as for postzygotic isolation is barrier that occurs after fertilization which prevent the hybrid zygote from developing and reproducing. Prezygotic isolation is divided into five. First, habitat isolation. Two species occupy different habitats of the same area. They lack opportunity to encounter each other. For example, gutter snake lives mainly in water while other species lives on land. Second, behavioral isolation. The unique courtship ritual to attract mates and other behaviors that isolates to different species. For example, blue-footed boobies mates only after a courtship display unique to their species. Next, temporal isolation. Two species breed at different times of the day or season or years cannot mix their gametes. For example, eastern spotted skunk mates in late winter while western spotted skunk mates in late summer. Next one is mechanical isolation. Different morphologies prevent successful mating completion. For example, these two snails of genus Bradybina have different spiral direction. As a result, their genital openings are not aligned. The last one is gametic isolation. Male and female gametes of different species fail to fuse to form a zygote due to incompatible biochemical mechanism. For example, gametes of red and purple sea urchin are difficult to fuse because the proteins on the surfaces of the eggs and sperms bind very poorly 
to each other. For the post-zygotic isolation, the three types are First, hybrid inviability. The F1 hybrid zygote fails to develop. It will die at early stage of embryonic development. For example, here is the hybrid from genus Rana. Second one is hybrid sterility. The F1 hybrid are healthy but sterile. For example, mules, taigon, liger, and honey. Lastly, hybrid breakdown. Hybrid may be fertile in first generation, but when they meet, the offsprings are sterile. The offsprings of F1 hybrid, they have to have reduced fertility. For example, the F1 hybrid of cotton is fertile, while the F2 hybrid is sterile. So, that's all. Happy learning!